I find it absolutely surreal that next week fans will be playing the very first new Tekken game in the better part of a decade. And although I did predict the release being this year, I never guessed it would be before January would even draw to a close. It seems like only yesterday that we saw the villainous smile of the current reigning king of the Iron Fist leering from the Evolution tournament screen. For let's face it, the one man who can vanquish Heihachi Mishima then immediately stand toe to toe with the demon who is been terrorizing the cast of Street Fighter for an even longer time and walk away unscathed get to lay claim to this title at this point. Hail denizens of the intertubes, I am Necropants and as the king of Iron Fist tournament dawns upon us in a few days and all combatants have been revealed for the game's release and story proper, I thought I would weigh in on that final roster one by one while all their specific character announcement trailers play out. And since every new Tekken game is an event if not an era, just for a bit of fun I might as well make a character tier list, where I will rank each character based on the new visual designs, gameplay and my historical preference. And so as a disclaimer, because I know I'm about to mortally offend 90% of Tekken aficionados, this is my personal subjective list as a player of the franchise as long as it has been in existence. So take it all with a grain of salt. As I tend to be a big fan of video game assholes, and as we know the Tekken series is home to some of the biggest assholes in gaming history, while the rest of the roster is generally populated by dicks. And well, I don't like dicks. So if you prefer playing with dicks, more power to you buddy, you do you. As a caveat, I will begin with the character I have played for, oh my god, 30 years of the franchise's history. Although I did not really start taking him seriously until Tekken 2. And then I'll pivot back around to each of the characters in order as they appear on the character select screen. So without further ado. Get ready for the next battle. New Challenger! Kazuya Meshima! The cold oppressor returns to the Tekken universe after a brief hiatus beating the living hell out of the entire cast of Smash Brothers Ultimate and making legions of that game's players cry for bands into their bowls of fruity pebbles. And he has frankly never looked better. And after a bunch of hours playing him in the closed network test and beta phases as well as the Steam demo, I can say my original assessment of his new abilities on reveal ended up panning out a little different. His costume and rage art are inspired but left me pretty confused in the gameplay after significant changes from the CNT to the beta period. Many Kazuya players have a sour impression which appears to be beginning to change as time goes on and new tech is found in the demo with the possible caveat that he has some very powerful tools in the demon poor heat engager for example which drastically lower his barrier of entry. So all you Kazuya haters can look forward to even more fun in the green and yellow ranks next week as I suspect his popularity will only grow in the casual audience. The new tools are pretty good apart from the fake out string to shattered spine and the new hell sweep being beautifully animated but completely useless. As the Hihachi-esque up forward 4 extension cannot be done separately as I had originally hoped. Also I suspect some of the new creative tech may be removed as it's out of the combo progression the developers seemingly intend. I hope I'm wrong here and I want to put him in S tier but as it stands I simply cannot. So he spearheads the A tier for now. Niente di più facile. Claudio Serafina! The Italian so-called destroyer of demons and famed exorcist of the Archers of Sirius makes his return after having his ass beaten into compliance by Heihachi in the previous installment. I am just completely apathetic about this character. The Namco team really lost their step in character designs after Tekken 5 DR until they found a return to form in the Tekken 7 DLC as far as I and many others are concerned. This character has a frankly 
ridiculous moveset in the Starburst shenanigans. Namco, it seems, got some Final Fantasy XIV Street Vendor NPC assets along with the Noctis license in Tekken 7 and copy pasted them into the game. Be prepared to have your wall standing punishes loaded at mid range as Claudio players love to super spam Superman punches like they have wet dreams about Roman Reigns every night. Coupled with the fact he seems relatively strong at this point and maybe even S tier, so for me, it's a hard D. The mystic stargazer makes her somewhat surprising but very welcome return to Tekken 8. A traditionally very unpopular character simply by virtue of an arguably bland initial visual design in Tekken 6, coupled with a strange Voldo-esque moveset based on the fighting style of insects. I however have always had a soft spot for her, and she returned in Tekken 7 with an inspired redesign and some like to say broken movement becoming a very popular tournament character which led to a boost in her popularity overall. The best Tekken 6 character by far in my eyes and I still maintain she's not as strong as people think and that everyone should have had her movement buff in Tekken 7. And I would say I think it's evidenced by the current best player in the world Aslan Ash pivoting away from using her and even going to win the Tekken World Tour with Katarina who I actually think is a bullshit character. As the current vessel of the shackled demon Azazel who was responsible for taking Jin out of commission after the events of Tekken 6, very interested to see how her role in the story evolves and even more excited to dive into practice mode with her as I am considering maining her in Tekken 8. The new costume is sick and they have rightly doubled down on the supernatural aspects of her character making the fighting style make more sense. S tier and my current second favorite character in Tekken history. Tekken 8! New Challenger! The Dancing Phoenix I imagine will be a fixture in every Tekken game from this point as she has not missed the game since her original appearance in Tekken 3. Oh so many years ago. And as a popular character among certain circles of the fanbase if you know what I mean, so of course she returns and this is by far my favorite visual design of her yet. And she's pretty much exactly what you would expect and appears to have been training her pet panda in her moves. But still chasing Jin after all these years to the point of being a veritable stalker. Apparently she just simply has to know something important from Jin no matter the cost and I think we all know what that is. Will she finally obtain the object of her desires and affections in Tekken 8 or have her heart destroyed with the knowledge that his heart only belongs to her arm? A pretty annoying character for some people but I don't mind her. She's a B tier. The avatar of Dennis Rodman, frozen in time as a shadow agent of ninjutsu, makes his return after being replaced by his female master in Tekken 7. Which seems to have been an attempt to make the design more palatable to the fanbase, if you know what I mean. Appearing to belong to the same organization and branch of the UN of another newcomer. I actually really like the Master Raven design, albeit being a character archetype that I've never really been interested in playing myself. I have a feeling we may have never really got to know Master Raven's true potential in Tekken 7 due to low popularity and there were conversations at the time that she was slept on. I have to say at the very least the team have done an amazing job with his revamped version and he looks more interesting than ever and frankly kind of insane of all the new shadow powers. Very confusing. Potentially more popular in this outing and definitely a hundred times more frustrating to deal with. Middle of the pack, B tier. Uh, 
jiu-jitsu has evolved to a new level. Tekken 8! New Challenger! Accepte ta défaite, tu as perdu d'avance. Lecter! Chevalier! And just when Raven thought he was cool, the Phantom Raven makes his appearance in the Tekken franchise to show him how refined violence is truly dished out. This character design has been met with a very positive response and seems to be a construct and revamp of the Noctis assets they license as a guest for Tekken 7. Which at a time I felt was a better character for a Soul Calibur game and I'm still fairly salty that we never got to see Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy 7 Remake instead. Although I must say this guy seems to be a much better fit for an actual Tekken character so I am happy to welcome him into the fold. Man. I was looking into the character profile and Namco really put a lot of work into fleshing out this guy's story. A James Bond-esque French super spy and the descendant of a knighthood and leader of Raven's organization as the true master. Looking forward to getting really frustrated by this character as he sports a lot of Noctis and Kunimitsu influence and it's clearly on display here. Namco put a lot of effort into this character recruiting a very famous French actor Vince Cassel to voice him and it's one of the better designs showing that their recent return to form and character designs was not just the flash of a pan in Tekken 7. As for me though, he can sit thoroughly beside his compatriot in the B tier. Get ready for the next battle! Tekken 8! New Challenger! Kunoazio Shirugai! Maintaining Namco's momentum in recent character designs arrives a mysterious newcomer, Reina, the long-rumored female Mishima, which is actually denoted as a fighting style in the franchise among long-term players, as opposed to an actual member of the Cursed Bloodline, appears to be finally here, utilizing a combination of a relatively new karate-based martial art, Taido, which features a lot of the acrobatic kicks as well as the traditional Mishima techniques which appear to be lifted straight out of Hihachi's moveset including an iconic electric wind god fist and on closer inspection a lot of reanimated Lydia moves which makes me fear a bit for the fate of that character. The vast majority of people seem to be very excited about this character, apart from a select few who think that she's a bit too close to a particular trope common in anime culture. Since I do my utmost to avoid information I deem to be spoilers, I have largely avoided looking into what is known about this character. It seems that everyone immediately jumped upon the notion that she is another one of the veritable basketball team of children Hihachi fathered to combat his hated son. Recent trailers definitely give no so subtle hints to the significance to the main plot and her obvious power. Regardless, as a dedicated Mishima player, I'm very excited to dive into this character and see what makes her tick. Curiously, she also seems to possess Kazuya's Mist Step move. I have a feeling there may be somewhat of a plot twist with this particular character, because I have not seen Namco actually specifically state who she is. Easy S tier for me. Azucena Milagros Ortiz Castillo, the perfect blend of Lucky Chloe, Katerina Alves, and Josie Rizal, arrives in the form of the first announced new character of the game in the heavily MMA evade and counter based Azucena, hailing from Peru. 
It was curious that it took so long into the roster reveals to actually receive a new character. And Tekken 8 seems to have gone for a more quality over quantity based approach and infamously the current world champion using her to devastating effect in Namco's Tekken 8 Invitational event, completely dominating the competition with a huge shit eating grin on his face the entire time, proving he had already cracked the game with this character. Cough cough and showing her off as an absolute menace, much to the producer's chagrin, who had requested that they made the event entertaining to the audience, who then vowed to heavily retune her for release. Community reception seemingly overwhelmingly positive, but I consider comedy relief characters in Tekken a bit on the boorish side. It's obvious that she is taking the place of the much divisive Lucky Chloe and aligned with Kazuya's G Corporation for promotional purposes for her coffee brand. C tier. For coffee, of course. <laughs> The Desert Falcon somewhat surprisingly returns as a base roster character and in his initial appearance in Tekken 7 was in the conversation as one of the most boring character designs in Tekken if not the entirety of the fighting game genre the world has ever seen. In not only his generic guy from Saudi Arabia attire, to his fighting style which struck me as some sort of $2 store Law and Lee mashup. While many unfamiliar that he came out first, a bargain basement Rashid of Street Fighter fame. A rather common conversation that has come up as it almost seems like a running joke between Capcom and Namco's fighting division known for their collaborations in the past. Along with his generic paramilitary hero looking to avenge his a friend as he calls him to which Kazuya Mishima likely would have to tell him to get in line at this point, I was initially very disappointed to see him take a character slot when they had such a unique design in Zafina from that area of the world. And yes, I know she's technically Egyptian. But now that Zafina is also announced, I can breathe easy so my contempt for this character is significantly lessened. And they have made a solid attempt at least to make him more interesting. So I'll upgrade him to D tier. Tekken 8! New challenger! Come and get some, I dare you. Marshall! Love! The legendary dragon of course returns and I do not ever see a Tekken game without the immortal Bruce Lee being represented in some form either by Martial Law himself or his son Forrest. And let's just say, a son whose apple has not fallen far from the tree. As one of the very first character reveals, you can tell it was by careful design, as he clearly demonstrates Namco's use of the Unreal Engine and new graphical advancements, which have to mark the biggest jump in many years from a company that's in its formulative heyday was considered at one point the cutting edge of the industry. So I have to admit, Law looks incredible in this game, especially the facial animations and general work there. Um, and it's very obvious someone at Namco is a massive Bruce Lee fan. A lot of his iconic attacks and mannerisms are on clear display and he looks insane with many iconic callbacks. Get ready for the army of three bar laws with an either lower barrier of execution for some of his more traditionally difficult techniques have been much lessened and made easier to execute. God save us all. High B tier for me. Tekken 8! New Challenger! Levi Smith! You 
the long requested representative of the Wing Chun style and a character originally designed to be a Tekken 8 character, which probably explains the relatively low number of new additions that eventually made it into the base roster. The Grand Master of Drip, so called, was introduced in a DLC season in Tekken 7. After Namco finally realized, after a couple of decades, how much money they could make selling new characters, he was an instant hit, which gave me Eddie Gordo vibes at the time threatening to cross over into mainstream popularity with the likes of rapper T-Pain cosplaying him. I at the time did find it relatively curious the praise he was getting as I found his design actually somewhat generic. I mean you were really showing your hand with a name like Leroy Smith and looking like some guy you might see on the sidewalk of a Las Vegas strip. Notoriously broken on release and requiring many balance patches to bring him somewhat in line, this character almost single-handedly begun the controversy about characters as pay-to-win DLC in the fighting game community with his obviously over-tuned moveset, which remains a conversation to this day. He looks absolutely fantastic in this game and I particularly like the Rage Art. Solid beat here. And from one controversy to the next it seems, and Namco really getting ahead of the curve on this one. This character has created discussion that has basically rabid online arguments for years since their release in Tekken 6 way back then, and I will say Namco knew exactly what they were doing. Originally stated as a female character in the arcade Japanese BIOS, which lots of people would like to have you forget, was still a thing in my country at the time when Tekken 6 came out in the arcades. Leo is Tekken's first gender fluid, some might say non-binary character, and as as it is a fictional character that has created a lot of discussion, Namco have smartly leaned into the controversy and continued to lean into the gender fluidity extremely, let us say, or literally. From memory in Tekken 6 they had a female customizations including a bikini and then in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 they had male customizations which continued into Tekken 7 where it was explicitly referred to the character as male. But it doesn't really matter what Namco say at this point and people have made up their opinion. I for one simply don't care. It was extremely slept on in Tekken 7 and I'm finding that you might see one every 6 months online so it Worst character in the franchise, bottom D tier. Tekken 8! New Challenger! Panda! Ling's personal bodyguard and pet trained by the late Hihachi Mishima in beer martial arts appears to have gotten a few new moves courtesy of her mistress in Tekken 8. One of Tekken's infamous joke characters and not the first or last animals to make an appearance on the roster with strong rumour of either the boxer, kangaroo or the dinosaur equivalent appearing as DLC this time around. Quite a few people are salty that she has her own slot and is not a pallet swap of Kuma and I can't say I disagree with them. I think when it comes down to it Namco added the number of characters they wanted the game to have on the base roster knowing that there's little chance of making any money selling them as DLC later on. And on that note, I'm not going to begrudge them on that. I remember a time when we got a release and that's all we got and the game never even barely got patches. And I was there for games like Tekken 4 which were fundamentally broken on release and never got fixed. So I will not let perfect be the enemy of good in this case. Eris of Avoiding the Puddle famously mentioned how excited the director was when they announced the bears yet again in Tekken 7 at a tournament that he was commentating at and seemed very proud of themselves for the fur physics. They are after all somewhat a Tekken mascot at this point but an obvious D tier. Get ready for the next battle! Section 8! New what? Challenger! Asuka Kazama! Asuka is a spirited peacemaker 
much in the way certain world powers conduct peace by generally beating the hell out of the people they endeavor to liberate. And it seems at some point she was destined for more in the Tekken lore, being the cousin of Jin Kazama in her Tekken 5 debut, but has basically floundered in a feud with Lily ever since and has become somewhat of a comedy relief character herself, when it seems she was originally designed as the replacement for her aunt Jun Kazama. With Jun's return, the two characters are now barely similar, with Asuka taking a more hard form of the Kazama style. Very popular character overall, especially in Japan, and I have never played her, so I won't comment on the Tekken 8 changes, but I've seen some lifelong Asuka players pretty dissatisfied. So we'll see what the day one patch brings to the game. I think she looks pretty cool here, but I'm not a great fan of the schoolgirl outfit. I prefer her more traditional attire. So I will have to give her a middle of the pack B. Get ready for the next battle! Tekken 8! The paradoxical silver-haired devil makes his return with a pretty radical visual design change. This guy is a veteran favorite and is a contrast between the sadistic grit of the Mishima feud as he was a, the adopted son of Hihachi but also a big part of some of the series more iconic comedic relief moments. Originally represented as a villain with a hatred for his adopted brother and father, in recent years a partnership with Lars. I really like this character and his gameplay design has always been nuanced and interesting with a lot of flair. Originally a derivative of lore, but now distinctively his own hitman flavor of martial arts, so to speak, and is one of the more demanding characters in the game from an execution perspective. Seems like a lot of just frame based attacks utilizing voice lines in his new design. And he looks great, but I have one problem. What is this costume? The guy traditionally has drip oozing out of every pore, but now he just looks like some level 1 minion in a Japanese RPG or a generic soldier in a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Maybe it's just the visor. Maybe it's okay if the visor just gets removed. I will find out. But because of this, um, he gets a Ted downgrade heading into the B class, where I was actually tempted to put him in A. One of the few characters to make an appearance in every single Tekken game, this hot-blooded destroyer returns once again with a fairly radically different design. Originally cited as being Kazuya's main rival on the martial arts circuit, and one of the only characters in the franchise that claim he fought the devil to a draw prior to the first King of Iron Fist tournament, the canonical winner of the King of Iron Fist 3 who notoriously left early before the true final fight began when Ogre achieved its final transformation, leaving one Jin Kazama to clean up the remains. This also signified the man's downfall sadly into comedy relief ever since where he has spent the majority of his time down on his luck and generally been a loser with Law and Forrest and Steve Fox. Although not a big fan of the new hairstyle and actually preferring his Tekken 4 look, he is looking as much as of a menace as he has ever been despite the big changes to his infamous Phoenix Smasher. But despite all of this, a tier. Section 8! New Challenger! Chase 2! Jen Kazama! The Lightning of Fate makes his return after being out of commission since the events of Tekken 6 where he traditionally had taken the mantle of the series protagonist from his father Kazuya, who it seems he was originally supposed to replace. Although very popular with the more casual audience and people who came into the series due to the cultural phenomena that was Tekken 3, 
Longtime fans like myself hated it and felt like he was a less controversial and safer character and touted the last hope of mankind. Splitting in personality later from his design which became Devil Jin, the character seen a number of revamps being a top character in 3 and tag tournament to being completely broken in Tekken 4 and then spending some time paying for it in the next few games until Tekken 7 where the now unshackled from traditional weaknesses which made people deem him not a Mishima to now obtaining tools such as a relatively normal launching electric is bottom of the A tier for me. Eight. New challenger. Going somewhere? This silent assassin is another character that has never missed a game due to her conveniently being cryogenically frozen to be used as a weapon by the Mishima Zaibatsu during the events of Tekken 2. Traditionally a mercenary with a very flaky allegiances and her own decades long feud with Kazuya's former subordinate Anna, in Tekken 6 she fought for Jin until being coerced into servitude by Hihachi upon Jin's disappearance in Tekken 8. Nina now works for Kazuya as his commander of the G Corporation's forces, sporting a dramatically changed look and that I'm not the greatest fan of to be honest, looks quite mumsy, and an almost Resident Evil feel to her aesthetic and gameplay changes now to the extent of utilizing firearms, this was a character that was my main in Tekken 1 and 3 due to Kazuya's absence but who I fell away from in recent years and I still find her butterfly combo loops um, very very fun and satisfying though. A tier. Get ready for the next battle. Check turn eight. New challenger. The blood teller never skipping a beat since his first appearance in Tekken 3 is a longtime fan favorite and rival to Jin Kazama and after a really weird aesthetic change in Tekken 7 appears to be somewhat back to his normal self, eye intact and all. If there's a character that embodies a general misunderstanding of even the larger fighting game community of Tekken's gameplay it's probably this guy. Wildly considered among the casual gaming crowd as the Taekwondo dude you pick up and mash kicks with and profit, this seemingly mindless character that sees many people through the normal ranks actually belies a very technical character that sees many hit a brick wall as they rise, perhaps artificially in the ranks, and who actually has major weaknesses once you know how to exploit them. Although he seems to have received a couple of obnoxious upgrades in Tekken 8 so we may have to see how this pans out going further. It is undeniable this guy's charisma and attraction for a lot of people but for me he's top of the seat here. New Challenger! The God Fist is back and no doubt stronger than ever, famously the main director of the series long labored Katsuhiro Harada who has been seen in the past entering tournaments with and this dude has always been somewhat of a menace since his first appearance in Tekken 5. Very strong, powerful and quick but I've had limited exposure to him so far in Tekken 8. Evidenced by his late dominance in the Tekken 7 competitive scene after an infamous patch, this time around he will likely be back for unholy vengeance after sustaining a crushing defeat apparently at the hands of Leroy Smith. Hell, don't worry bro, we all felt that DLC armor. Very traditional look for Feng this time as he always has, as it seems like he will always have but no doubt there's an alternative costume for out there for those of you who want some slick suited Chinese mafia type attire going on. Don't have much to say since I've never really played him very much so he's another B tier for me personally. Oh, 
If there have ever been any characters with a threat of becoming a mainstream breakout name, this guy has to be in the conversation. The mechanized space ninja has a storied history in the franchise as well as Soul Calibur, having never missed either of the game's entries. Let's just ignore the existence of Tekken Revolution, shall we? Although apparently the Soul Calibur version is an ancestor. It seems almost everyone has heard of Yosemitsu, and if you ever bring up Tekken to the average layperson on the street, he is likely a name that comes up. Sporting wildly drastic design changes in each game, I have to admit to being a little disappointed in this one. But very interesting to see what alternative costumes are available. Notoriously weird, if not outright difficult to play, there is always a certain kind of player that ends up being very good with this character and everyone you come across will have their own particular style, which is a really cool thing in fighting games. I have to say he's looking particularly Soul Calibur, it appears that his traditional heal mechanics has shifted to his sword attacks in an attempt to encourage a more aggressive approach. And I think he may be stronger than he has ever been in this game, but the visual design knocks him back a few points for me into the B tier. Adding out the release roster is the so-called Master of Salmon, Kuma. Now with the apparent death of Iachi and the reveal of Reina featuring what seems to be a smattering of the fallen Mishima's moves and the reveal of Kuma's new look wearing the traditional Heihachi fight attire, rumors and hope emerged that he was actually to be a Heihachi clone in this game, which I have to say I would not have been opposed of. And this seemed to be more likely with the reveal as Panda has her own slot. Unfortunately, this appears to not be the case and they disappointingly seem to be sharing movesets and only differentiated in the Heat and Rage Arts, with Panda using Ling's moves in Heat and Kuma with a bear version of the Electric Wind Godfist along with a few others. Although I am not a Heihachi player or bear enjoyer, I couldn't help to be pretty disillusioned with this reveal. And I go back to my feeling that they should have been a costume change to make space for another character. And it seems like it's just padding out the roster to 32 characters. Although I do find him a little more interesting than Panda, so he goes at the tail end of the C tier. Get ready for the next battle! Tekken 8! New <laughs> Challenger! <laughs> the fighting heiress continues her somewhat strange obsession with Asuka after losing to her twice in the previous tournaments and still it seems sneaking out at night in her own private jet to attend fighting tournaments so Daddy doesn't find out. Now featuring a cat appropriately named Salt because it's sure to flow when you encounter her online, to pair with Leroy's doggo Sugar and a new design and a new face. This character is extremely popular for obvious reasons with the legion of degenerates and foot enjoyers cementing her place on the roster eternally. I personally have always held a deep dislike for this character and also feel she's been slapped on to a certain degree in Tekken 7. I guess I just prefer traditional martial arts and I prefer supernatural elements over this floaty, jumpy, flippy thing that most of the female characters tend to have, Zafina being an obvious exception. However, I have to say I actually like her new design for some reason. I can't place. Maybe it's updated facial work in game that makes her look 100% less vacuous. I guess this all depends on how much she pisses me off in this game going forward, but for now, B tier alongside her crush, Asuka. Eight. New Challenger! <laughs> 
Originally Jin's personal destroying automation created by Dr. Bosconovich in the likeness of his deceased daughter, with a curious relationship with Lars that's been developing since her release alongside him in the arcade Bloodline Rebellion expansion to Tekken 6. Now free from Jin's control, she is apparently back to fight alongside Lars who she has developed strange <coughs> malfunctions for. Although I appreciate the facial update in here, the costume itself is a miss of me looking like some sort of weird hybrid of a fairy and a ballerina. Also, is that a hat nailed to her head? Still bound to have some amusing interactions and I find myself strongly fighting back the urge to make a more um, specific jokes regarding heads. Another annoying uh, popular character famously almost banned in Korea for her use of chainsaws which I believe are exchanged with laser swords in that region in the past anyway. This looks pretty similar to me or though one of the more robotic alternatives in looks that I've stumbled across looking around online looks actually very nice and is bound to be so popular and I'm prepared to be royally pissed every time I encounter her legion of players online. Uh, she's a C. The man who Kazuya not so affectionately refers to as a sick joke upon finding out that he is in fact Kazuya's half-brother and bastard son conceived by Heihachi during one of his historical visits to Sweden. A soldier in the Mishima Zaibatsu Tekken Force and the man with there's something about Mary here using Tekken Force martial arts which I assume translates to some anime shit which makes no sense. This character has always been annoying and this is a word that no doubt has appeared in many of my <laughs> breakdowns of some of these characters so far. In this case mainly due to finding his move stilted and ambiguous but at the same time deceptively quick. A complete menace in Tekken 6 and pretty much nerfed into oblivion ever since for famously being one of the worst characters in Tekken 7 as he seems to have been hit with the gin tax in the last few games. So I'm actually expecting a pretty substantial buff to this character for Tekken 8 and I know I'm going to hate it. C tier. Get ready for the next battle! Section 8! New Challenger! Kazama! The Light of Hope makes her long-awaited canonical appearance despite actually being in multiple games over the years, either in her redesigned form, which appears to be a heavily modified from Tekken Tag Tournament 2, and her alternative form which I can only imagine is some sort of corrupted spirit and cringingly named Unknown. Originally replaced by Asuka Kazama, these two characters are now almost nothing alike, with June taking on a more delicate style reminiscent of a pure version of the aforementioned character. Very curious to see what the story behind her actually is, as the one person who has ever been able to crack Kazuya's coldness, and secretly praying they are not doing the lazy Kazumi route and that, that she is actually dead and some sort of spiritual entity. Please don't do that to us, Nabco. Even though she looks disturbingly exactly the same as she used to. Although a strong following in the casual scene due to story implications, it's never really played out in the games which probably explains her relative absence. But this looks like about to change in Tekken 8 as she appears to be extremely powerful, amazingly animated and a very interesting chip damage and health balancing powers mechanic. Easy A tier. Unlike Kazuya who has been in relative control of his demonic aspect ever since the events of Tekken 4 and has embraced this power, 
Jin has of now yet to harness his and outright denies it, leading it to emerge catastrophically when he loses control. Despite complaints, this has historically been the reason Kazuya's devil form is integrated into his character, while Jin's more negative form is a separate character entirely. Now in Tekken 8, Jin's default form seemed to be incorporating aspects of this demonic form and many people including myself considered the fact that maybe we would not see Devil Jin in this game. Well of course we were wrong here and I imagine it's because they want to tell the story in this game. I really like the new design and he finally looks menacing again instead of just the total edgelord. But look at that jacket, the edgiest of edgelords is back. Another character who has yet to miss a canonical Tekken game, the high-tech Annihilator, is the latest prototype Jack featuring enhanced AI that it seems giving the demo we may about to experience in-game. These robots are the creation of G Corporation which Kazuya basically engaged in a hostile takeover after they betrayed him at the Battle of Hayomaru at the end of Tekken 4. A key weapon in Kazuya's army and which is led by Nina Williams and another fan favourite who is deceptively fast given his huge size mainly due to his unnatural reach with a traditional weakness to sidestepping. He has often seemingly been a problem at the beginning of the game's life cycle, really dominating the early arcade versions of Tekken 7 along with Dragunov and he seems to be extremely strong in this game from what we have experienced in the network tests and beta. Personally, I've never been a fan, but hey, naturally a lot of people in their robot pajamas love big lumbering robots. So have at it guys, see tier. I am not going to lie, Tekken 2's king blew my mind as a teenager. I was an avid Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat fan, but it wasn't until I dove into King's move list where I truly appreciated grapplers in a fighting game. The Anger of the Beast, once touted in Guinea's Book of Records as the character with the most moves in any video game, I cannot see how this could have changed in Tekken 8 unless it is dethroned by one of his other compatriots like Nina or Lei, who is yet to make an appearance and due to Harada's disdain at his response in the last game, may never. Now with the lumbar check and the RKO, it seems he may have almost every wrestling move ever performed. And think of your favourite wrestling move or any wrestling move at all for that matter and it's more likely to appear in his move list. Now with unbreakable counter hit throws and is that super armor and heat? Mark my words, this guy is going to be an absolute problem. Famously, grapplers like Zangief may be more well known, but without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, King is, well, the king. At least until Armor King makes his inevitable appearance. A tier. Tekken 8! New Challenger! This counter-punching paragon created from the genetic material of Nina Williams during her 20-year break in the Mishima Zaibatsu's cryostasis chamber has been a fan favourite ever since his appearance in Tekken 4 with having no kicks at all but these button used for various stances and evades. Despite all this, he has typically been a very technical character despite the relative straightforward appearance of his gameplay 
Although it seems like many of the more harder tools have been removed, much to the annoyance of veteran players. Although I'm not so sure, as as we have found out from the likes of Kazuya, it is entirely possible there is more insane stuff hidden in other places. Tekken games are always notoriously dense, and many of the tech found for characters is not found to long into the game's lifespan. Apparently this guy has come to terms with the fact Nina does not consider him to be her son. I'm just thinking, wait till we find out who his father probably is, if indeed one exists at all. Although, another iconic Tekken character with a high skill ceiling, he's not my thing I guess. Hi C tier. The Russian White Angel of Death, Sambo Commander, makes his return and my god look at this footage. This guy came right out alongside Lily in the arcade expansion for Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection and I feel he marked the end of Namco's inspired character designs despite at the time being constantly compared to Marilyn Manson. And this has continued until the Tekken 7 DLC when we started getting interesting characters again, in my opinion. Now, although this is his best design yet, and I understand dedicated players ended up being pretty disappointed with him in Tekken 7 after being hit with a number of substantial nerfs, including his iconic down 2, which helped him dominate early Tekken 7 alongside Jack, but I am not sure if I will stick with him as there is a lot of characters I want to dive into this time around. But as it stands, he's top of the S tier. In fact, I might consider him to be the most inspired redesign so far in Tekken 8. S tier all the way. Finally, the harbinger of chaos, Brian Fury. An absolute psychotic cyborg maniac with an addiction to violence that makes another return after not missing a beat since he was introduced in Tekken 3 and instantly became a fan favorite. People lamenting the loss of Bruce always look to the likes of Josie and Tekken 7 newcomer Fakuram, but I have always had an inkling that Brian Fury may be the true reason why he is absent, because you really couldn't ask for more in a kickboxing bulldozer that he has become. Despite some debate and disagreements online, this guy is one of the more advanced characters you could pick up due to I feel having a back sway which really gets in the way due to Tekken movement system being complicated enough for most people as it stands, but extremely satisfying if he clicks with a high skill ceiling to aspire to. You can be sure I will be holding back often desperate to expose fraudulent taunt jet upper attempts just as I did in Tekken 7, and although I feel they stayed a bit safe with this new but really classical inspired design, the Tekken 7 uniform I understand which I consider the best design he's ever had appears to be still available. Easy S tier. And now we have the first reveal for the season of inevitable DLC characters coming to the game, maybe for years to come. And heading up the season after the recent hilarious takedown of one lol cow on Twitter trying to accuse the company of racism for not including said character is Eddie Gorda. And you imagine waking up in the morning and deciding out of all people that you were going to talk shit to and you choose Katsuhiro Harada. Glorious indeed. 
because of course the takedown was swift and brutal. That said, this character was indeed a cultural phenomenon. Back when Tekken 3 was released, I knew about the traditional Brazilian fighting style because I was a fan of metal bands in the region as well as martial arts, but I'd never heard the word capoeira uttered by anyone until Tekken 3 came out when overnight everyone in town was all of a sudden a lifelong capoeira practitioner and all the hip-hop breakdancers on the street started pretending they were doing martial arts. This guy is another Tekken character along with Yusimitsu and the guy with the cat head who has been on the verge of household names. So this was inevitable. Of course Namco are going to hold key characters like this as DLC as it's just the state of the video game business at this point and as this is a huge game with more characters than any other mainstream fighter at the very least, as well as their characters being notoriously more expensive to produce, I'm not going to complain. Remember, we're talking about a fighting game where the average character has a move list of around 100 moves, and that's actually generally on the lower side. As I get to the end of this video, I realize I cannot in good conscience put Kazuya in A tier, as I originally intended despite my issues with some of his gameplay at this point, so he's going back to the bottom of the S tier. Final note on the roster. Of course, you are never going to please everyone and there's always someone out there that's going to be butthurt that their favourite character didn't make the cut. But I think this is the best release roster for Tekken in recent memory, with the possible exception of the two bears Shaheen and Leo. But that is my personal preference. Both of my main characters are there at release so I couldn't be happier really and with more characters than ever that I eventually want to pick up. So I give the release roster a 9 out of 10 very strong. So there we have it, only a couple of days remain and I probably will be streaming the story mode of the game over on Twitch Simulcast to hear the moment the game drops just to get it out of the way. There's a lot to dive into with this package and it's all looking to be going down as one if not the greatest fighting game of all time, at least eventually, because you can be damn sure the balance is going to be an absolute mess for some time. This is, after all, the first Tekken game that has not had an extensive arcade playtesting before coming out to the home, but expect it to be supported for many years to come, if not more than its predecessor. Now, I realize I stumbled over my words a couple of times in this, but it's a long video and I'm not sure about views, so I will just leave it in for the lols. Apologies all the same, and I'll continue to work on my craft going forward. Thanks for checking out the video, and still listening if indeed you still are. Like, subscribe, comment and all that YouTube garbage, haters are welcome, and stay tuned for more content. Necropants, signing out.